All right, so today, welcome back to Pope Does PLTW. Um, we're going to be moving on to a new topic in IED, uh, which is tolerances. And tolerances is really an allowable variation within a part. So uh, <coughs> variation is unavoidable. Even with the most precise machines, variation is going to happen. No two manufactured parts are identical there's always going to be some little degree of variation. Even though parts may appear identical, um, they're still not. So you use tolerances and production drawings to control the manufacturing process and control variations. In particular, tolerances are applied to mating parts in an assembly because in an assembly, things need to fit correctly. And if they don't, then you have to throw out the entire product. So one advantage in tolerances is that interchangeable parts can be used. This is especially important for maintenance and repairs. So large tolerances may affect the functionality of a part. If you have some things that are designed to fit together in a certain way, and those parts don't turn out correctly, um, then the overall product won't function very well. But at the same time, small tolerances will affect the cost because the more precision you have, the more cost is gonna be involved. Um, quality control with inspection and rejection of parts. So you don't wanna have more rejections of parts in a manufacturing situation than you need. So you don't wanna specify a tolerance that is any smaller than necessary. Here's what ANSI says about this. Each dimension shall have a tolerance except for those specifically identified as reference, maximum, minimum, or stop. Tolerance may be applied directly to the dimension or indicated by a general note in the title block of the drawing. So we'll go over both of those as we go through tolerances. So tolerance, once again, acceptable amount of dimensional variation that will still allow an object to function properly. So if you look at this drill, drill press, there's a lot of different parts that um, need to fit together in a certain way and for the part and the product to function in the way that it was designed. So there are three basic tolerances and those are limit dimensions, bilateral tolerance, so you have a plus minus, and then unilateral tolerance where you have a plus on one side and then a zero on the other side. And we'll talk about where each one of those should be used. So first of all, we have limit dimensions. And these will provide an upper and lower limit for the dimension. Any size between or equal to the upper and lower limit is acceptable. So in this case, any number between 0 0.126 and 0 0.125 is going to be an acceptable limit. Bilateral tolerances provide equal variation on each side, both larger and smaller. That's why we have the plus minus there. So in this case, um, the whole note here says, 0.25 inches plus or minus 0 0.003 inches. And so anything that falls in between that um, is acceptable. Unilateral tolerance, usually used for a part that needs to fit exactly correct. So for ex this example, you can have an upper limit of 0 0.004 but you cannot have any smaller limit than 0.5 because otherwise that part will not fit with another part in the overall product. So they use separate plus and minus signs. Hole diameter may vary by 0.004 larger, but cannot be smaller than a half of an inch. <laughs> so, we want to identify the type of tolerance displayed in red. We have limit dimensions. That would be 
unilateral tolerance on the first part, bilateral tolerance in the middle, and then limit dimensions um, on the left side, or sorry, on the right side. So a specified dimension is the target dimension. That's ideal. So when you're dimensioning parts, you always want to put the big specified dimension first because that's what we're shooting for, but we don't know if the part is actually going to turn out that way. Limits are, def are the maximum and minimum sizes shown in the tolerance dimension. So the upper limit in this case would be 1.55 inches because it's plus 0 0.005. The lower limit is the minimum allowable dimension, which in this case is 1.45 because that's one and a half minus the 0 0.05. So tolerance is the total variance between the two. In this case, it's a tenth of an inch, upper limit minus lower limit. So we can calculate the tolerance by just simple addition and then simple subtraction. So we take our upper limit minus our lower limit to calculate the overall tolerance. General tolerances are assumed if no specific one is given for a dimension. Typically, um, they're specified based on the number of dimension digits to the right of the decimal point. So for example here, if the dimension has, is dimension to a tenth of an inch, then we allow a plus or minus of 0 0.02. If it's dimension to a hundredth of an inch, we allow a plus or minus of 0 0.01. And if it's dimension to a thousandth of an inch, we'll allow a plus or minus of 0 0.005. So here this is of a general tolerance on a drawing. Okay, so for example, the depth of a part is specified to three inches with no indication of tolerance, but then the general tolerances down here will apply. So the upper limit here is 3 plus 0 0.01 or 3.01 .01. the lower limit is 2.990 so my general tolerance upper minus lower is 0 0.02 inches manufacturer part is said to be out of tolerance if the part is not with not within the specified limits um, this is where quality control comes in in a manufacturing situation. The goal is to have as few rejected parts as possible because that leads to cost overruns. Types of fit. You have a clearance fit, limits the size of mating parts so the clearance always results when mating parts are assembled. Um, typically this is a peg inside a hole. Interference fit limits the size so that then an interference results when mating parts are assembled. And then you have a transition fit where two mating parts can sometimes have a clearance fit or sometimes have an interference. So clearance fit always between the axle and an opening, like we just talked about with the peg and the hole. Interference fit. The minimum size of the axle is 9.92, but the maximum size is 9.90. Therefore, if the parts are manufactured correctly, the axle will always be larger than an opening. This type of fit might be called a press or a force fit um, so that the parts can be pressed together in order to assemble them. So definitions, um, you can read over this slide. Uh, we're not gonna see this too much um, as far as max material and minimum material. Allowance, minimum clearance between parts, and so we can calculate allowance this way. And that is going to be the end of our show um, for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully we learned something about tolerance. We'll see you next time.